Ladies and gentlemen, in three, two, one. Good morning. My name is Daniel Umstead. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, today on the RNG Radio Show. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, every morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., around that time. No, I was having some uh, computer issues, but not going to worry about that because your focus is what is Dan going to talk about today regarding credit repair, real estate, resume writing, writing slash career tips, and a little bit of motivation. Also, I got a great, 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 great uh, King segment that I want to talk to you about. And uh, we're actually just going to call it Kings and Queens segment. So today's King is uh, actually that something happened in recent, recent news. So I want you to understand that. And actually, I'm going to be pulling a little bit from the movie. Uh, well, not the movie, but the uh, Netflix series, uh, Space Force. So even though it's supposed to be a comedy, but something real real definitely happened so <clears throat> first and foremost thank you so much for tuning in so let's get started our first segment that we always talk about is what credit repair because credit repair is the most important thing that you can have um, as far as moving forward now i know what you're thinking like well dan i don't even know where to get started gotta call me 267-702-3756 uh me and my girlfriend we run a credit repair program as far as helping individuals fix up their credit and get it to where they need to be at and typically results we'll see in about three to four months. So if you are interested in building up your credit and taking advantage, uh, I actually want to go over one of the uh, tools that you can utilize uh, that comes part of your service. So the first one is Credit Builder. Now understanding how your credit is calculated and how to read your credit report is the first steps in proving your credit and current standard automatically. So. Uh, what you need to know is simply this, 35% uh, of it has to do with your payment history as far as how you've been keeping up with payments, 30% uh, debt, you know, as far as how much you owe, uh, the 10% is, you know, as far as new credit, like, hey, has he done, he or she done any recent transactions, um, do they have any new installment loans, so on and so forth. 10% uh, is the types of credit, whether you are using credit cards, whether you are using installment loans, mortgages, car notes, so on and so forth. And 15% is length of credit history. That's plain and simple, folks. So you might have a credit card where you're like, you know what, I'm done with it. I'm going to cut it up and shred it to bits. And most people pay it off. And then once they pay it off, then they go to remove the credit card. Folks, that's completely backwards. What you need to do is um, pay it off, of course, but just leave it and then keep a very, very, very low balance on it. Um, and uh, somebody had asked me, you know, how do you get that perfect score? That is actually how you get that perfect score and utilization. So what does your credit repair company do, Dan, that's going to be mind-blowing to everybody else? Well, what we do is uh, we do a breakdown of the credit scoring system as far as what you've been rated on, you know, as far as what you're utilizing and pointing it out. Uh, there's also credit management techniques that we go over, details on how your personal financial actions can impact your credit score and how to enhance your current score. And then, of course, there's a wide variety of educational services, credit tips, and budgeting tools to establish and maintain your good credit. So this is one of the free services that's included, folks, that we actually show you like, hey, um, this is where your credit score is at, 600. This is how you get to 620 exactly. Um, and possibly more now if you were to do it on your own which is fine folks which is fine but if you were to do it on your own um you need to look at like all right well what do i have first mind you folks the credit uh repair company that i work with we plug all this information in for you so all you have to do is sign up in the morning and later on in the afternoon check it and be like oh this is what i need to prove on or if you have time right then and there Hey, this is what I need to focus on. So definitely take advantage of that in understanding that. Uh, but I went on to, for those that just want to do it on their own and un have a better understanding because folks, I want to give out free advice either way. So whether you get an 800 credit score through me or you get an 800 credit score through uh, yourself, that's quite all right. Just let them know that Daniel wants to give you the tips in regards to it. All right. So Experian, Experian has this article about understanding credit scores and the types of credit scores uh, that there is. So 
I just want to hop straight into understanding credit score factors and improving your credit scores based from what uh, experience says. So your total amount of debt, you know, and, and that's something that you could do today. You don't, like I said, you can do one or two things. Get out a pen and paper, you can get out your phone, you can get out your laptop, tablet, and make a list of every single thing that you are aware of, that you think you know, that you have an open account with, and just keep going through it. All right, oh, this person this, this person that, this person this, this person that. Man, do I still get another card? I don't know if I still got another. Clear! Clear! We pay off that card yet? Baby, I don't know, you gotta check it. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Clear! Did we pay off the Toys R Us credit card or not? Baby, I don't even know if that matters now. So, this is what you're dealing with, folks, when you are checking your own debt. Now, of course, through me, bam, we got a list. This is what you need to focus on and moving forward. Uh, types of accounts. So, that's what we were talking about before. The types of accounts that you have pertaining to your credit on what should be open, what should be closed, so on and so forth. Uh, number of late payments. Now, one... One payment, one payment that is missed will drop your credit score down by 50 points. I know, I know. I have no idea how they calculate it, but understand, folks, that these credit bureaus are for profit. They are going based upon what American Express has given them. They're going based upon what Ally Auto has given them. They're going based upon what Verizon has given them. And they're taking that information and saying, hmm, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. So, and I know folks are saying like, oh, that's what they mean when they say like, oh, we're going to be reporting this to the credit bureau. Yeah, go ahead. I don't care about that. You should care about that because you don't want your score to go even lower or keep it just stagnant, whether you be in the 500s, 400s, or even the 300s. So to get out of that or uh, 600s and you just need that extra boost, but to get out of that, give me a call, 267-702-3756. Now, um... Talked about number of late payments, age of accounts. That's your credit history, folks. So if you do have a credit card that you just signed up for, great. Hold on to that card until your kids got kids, kids, and those kids got extra kids, and then the other kids got kids that had some doll kids, and then the puppy kids got some kids. So keep your cards, folks. Uh, but like I said, don't go crazy with it in regards to uh, thinking that you need to keep high balances on it. Keep them low. All right? Uh, why lenders use the credit scores in the first place? So credit scores are consistent and objective. Not really because, um, you know, uh, everything in regards to consistency based upon uh, your credit history. So yeah, if you are making payments, you, I guess you could say it is. But if you are making payments and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you'll be good to go. My problem that I have with saying that credit scores are consistent consistent or have to do with consistency is that uh, for those folks that need to dispute some items on their credit report because they had nothing to do with those medical bills or bad debt or even collections, it still affects their scores. So that's why I say for me, I don't feel personally that the credit scores will be consistent. Uh, they reflect only your likelihood to repay debt responsibly based upon your past credit history and current credit status. So Current credit status, yes. Uh, by all means, they're going to be looking at that. So this is why they see. And, you know, it's proof of the pudding. Hey, for the past 10 months, if you've been paying your mortgage, most likely they're going to be like, well, they've been paying their mortgage. I'm pretty sure they're still going to be paying their mortgage. Now, of course, if you missed that one payment, like I said, it drops your credit score by 50 points, folks. So for a lender, they're like, mm, you missed that one payment. That means... You didn't pay, that means that person didn't get paid, and we might have an issue where we don't get paid. I don't know if this is going to work out. This, this is like that heartbreak, fellas. This is literally the lender uh, putting you in friend zone, okay? So, fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about. You need to see a nice girl, y'all chatting, y'all vibing. Everything is going great. You know, she liking you, you liking her. Everything is good to go. And then that conversation comes up. So, I was thinking, you know, maybe... Uh, <laughs> Let me just say, uh, what my whistle here? I was thinking maybe you and I, we can um, get together, you know, do some things and um, move forward in what we call a relationship. <laughs> what you think? And then the girl, she was like, you're like my little brother. What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. I think the best one, though, of that I've heard, though, is somebody getting t-shirts. I'm like, what? You're like 
like it suited to me. Yikes. Yikes. So, but this is why lenders use credit scores. They go in based upon um, your past history. But if you got one bad thing on there, one thing that doesn't make me think that this could be a relationship, hey, it is what it is. So, um, ah, and that's it. They said a two-minute read, but I wasn't believing the two-minute read when they said it was a two-minute read. All right, now let's go over to uh, my <clears throat> real estate tips. So I went on to wisebread.com and they talk about nine smart home buying tips uh, from real estate experts. So uh, first one, research agents before choosing one. You know, you want to make sure you got an agent, a realtor that uh, doesn't mind expressing themselves, is on social media. They're probably on YouTube. They probably have a Monday through Friday show at 7 a.m. And uh, in addition, they provide tips uh, as well as expert advice. And uh, they give out their phone number leisurely, 267-702-3756. So do your research, folks. On the best agent that you could find in the state of Pennsylvania and you know you'll find the one that you need no in all honesty folks please research there's gonna be realtors that are out there that are better than me and I can name a few right now um, if you're looking for one and of course they're through EXP I want to say it otherwise uh, you can go through uh, Jay Vick King uh, by all means he is based out in Jersey Cherry Hill he's been doing a lot of fix and flips for so for those uh, looking for a realtor that does fix and flips uh, based out in Jersey definitely the man uh, if you're looking for somebody that's uh, more home-based, it's going to give you that one-on-one -on -one and give you that full attention. Not saying that I do, but this is the one who brought me in, and this is my sponsor, Jerome H. Lewis Jr. You could definitely, by all means, uh, reach out to him as well. So, and these are folks that are my current friends on uh, Facebook, so feel free to tell through and go through their friends list and be like, oh, this is the one that Dan was talking about. Uh, but... Ultimately, please do your research, folks, whether you're based out of Minnesota, Texas, Hawaii, uh, California, doesn't matter. Please make sure that you are doing your research on your agent uh, before pursuing one. Uh, and this goes with interviewing them as well. How often will you send me listings? Uh, will you show me homes when I'm available? How long you've been working in real estate? What type of property do you specialize? Have you worked with other clients in my desired area and price range before? Because and, and that that makes a difference, folks. You know, I say with full confidence because I recruit for jobs that are usually in the pay range of between 15 and 22. If somebody were to say, hey, Dan, have you ever recruited for a $90 an hour job? Now, don't get me wrong. It's pretty much along the same lines as anybody else. But on the outside looking in, it's like, hmm, we're all people here, folks, but uh, dealing with somebody who's maybe uh, more strength and stronger in one field compared to the next does a whole lot of difference because they've seen it. They know what hiccups to come across and they know what uh, expected prices and costs could be out there, especially when it comes to the closing table. So make sure that when you are researching uh, the agent that you like, that they know what they're doing or you're willing to work with them in regards to know what they're doing. So uh, search social media for local real estate groups and Facebook is the best option. The only reason why I say that is that if you were to join or follow, if you will, a uh, group on Instagram, you know, your only notifications is for what people put up and that's it. If you were on Facebook and somebody was to put up a listing, if somebody was to put up a house, if somebody said, oh, here's my contact information, here's who I am, you have that direct connection where you could take that conversation through Messenger or <clears throat> if uh, they say, hey, uh, send me your email and I can send you some information, boom, now that conversation goes through email and other channels, whether it be phone, uh, text, please don't do WhatsApp though. Um, I, I just I just don't see the purpose of it. But hey, the person who did do WhatsApp definitely is making some moolah, making moolah. Number three, add a personal touch when there are multiple offers. So if you talk about your family in the letter, <coughs> you'll put all of the heartstrings of the uh, seller and have a much better chance of being selected. So um, it's just pretty much like, hey, how, how do you make yourself stand out? So the multiple offers is simply this you know a seller is looking to sell their home and you say like oh my gosh this will be great <coughs> this will be a wonderful opportunity for me and my family blah 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 compared to somebody who's like man i'm just looking to buy that thing flip it and get my money off of it today so the seller might be like oh 
I wanted this home to, and it's crazy folks, it's weird. You would think like, well, I'm just giving this away and making my money off it and moving forward. No, some of these sellers love the value of their home and some of these sellers want to keep that home feeling uh, continued on. So if you're talking to a seller that's uh, family based, coming in as a family, you know, uh, striking up a conversation in regards to that or letting the other agent know, like, hey, listen, we plan on continuing to making this a family and for generations to come. We got three little ones. Uh, you know, our oldest is off to college, but he's got a baby on the way with his fiance. So <coughs> we plan on keeping this home around for a very, very long time. That's stuff to add, folks. So uh, don't automatically settle on city limit. Now, if you've seen the news lately, in regards to Center City and some of the major, major city areas, you will see that, hey, wow, people were stuck in the city for like three or four days. Do I want that? Now, right now, uh, by all means, everything's opened up. And honestly, that was probably a little blip in the system where it was just a bad, bad week. It was like having a snow day in the middle of the summertime. So you gotta weigh out your options, but as far as convenience, you know, you gotta figure out like, hey, is this gonna be benefiting me in the long run or is this gonna be hurting me in the long run by moving into a city living? Uh, run through all costs before starting the home buying process. This is something that your realtor, this guy, G67, 702, 3756. I need to do plugs in everywhere I go, but you need to run through all the costs before starting the home buying process. And, um, the reason why I say that you really should know this because the best advice, the best advice, um, and I'll be honest with you, it did come from Keller Williams when I was first starting with them, but the best advice that I got in regards to, hey, what would be the estimated cost to take 10% of the uh, purchase value of the home? That's it, folks. That's it. I, I know, I know, I know, I know I just gave away like a million dollar secret out there where it's like, what? My realtor told me this, or my realtor told me that. No, just 10%. Just uh, after your 20% that you put down on the house. So if you got a $200,000 house, you put your 20% down, that's minus 40,000. Uh, you are down to 160,000. $16,000 is gonna be your max cost as far as paying for close costs. Now, are there first time home buyer programs out there? Are there seller's assists? Are there grants? Are there uh, loans that you didn't know about for the closing costs and all that jazz. Yes, 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 and more yes. But you need to talk to an agent to figure that out. If not, if you just need a number to go with, no more than 10% of what you actually pay for the house, folks. Number six, investigate the HOA. If there is one, homeowners association, some places might not have it. I, I live in a rural home out here in Mayfair neighborhood in Philadelphia. We don't have a homeowners association. I pay my rent monthly, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, <clears throat> Buy a home below your means. What? You should buy a home below your means. So the reason for that is because during economic times and struggle, because, and don't get me wrong, folks, this is a recession. Oh, no. My gosh. It is serious. Yes, it is. But I need you to understand something, folks, that um, had you or for those folks that should have live below their means, they probably wouldn't be struggling as much. Um, <clears throat> you, the people that thought that they had saved jobs, the people that thought that like, oh no, I'm gonna be okay, I don't have nothing to worry about, boom, they got hit with the layoff, or saying like, hey, you're gonna be furloughed just for about six weeks, but you could file for unemployment in the meanwhile, and then after the six weeks, we'll give you a call, okay? All right, thanks so much, dearie. And then you're sitting there stuck like, well, how am I supposed to pay the mortgage? Usually you want paying a mortgage. Okay. So, and in addition to other things, folks. So, uh, they put out here, uh, while your friends might struggle to pay for something at the top of the budget, you want to shoot for a home that's 75% less of what you're approved for to be able to save more efficiently for retirement, emergency repairs, travel, and just generally enjoy the home that you're living in. Who wants to be in a home where it's like, Hey, hey, turn the light on, turn the light on. You know we gotta pay the electric bill this month. Come on now, get the candles out. All right, everybody, we good to go? Cool, so uh, we're gonna be playing board game tonight. And tonight's dinner, Pop-Tarts. This time I warmed it up for everybody. 
You shouldn't be living like that. You should be living in a home that you're comfortable with, that you're able to uh, build upon, that you're able to create value in. Because the extra $10,000 for a home just because it has an extra half bath inside the home in the vanity area could be used towards putting $10,000 back in the home to make that long-term profit where it's like, oh, hey, by them paying uh, or putting a bathroom in on their own, it's brand new, it's renovated, and when it comes time to resale, that value of that home is going to increase. That's the game, folks. That's the game. Like I said, I always use a water bottle example. If I were to sell you this water bottle for 50 cents, you'd be like, no. But if I was Diddy, uh, LeBron James, Barack Obama, Beyonce, Jennifer Anson, even, and I said, hey guys, here's my water bottle. If uh, anybody would like to buy for five dollars, what can we buy while if that's Jennifer Aniston? Hold up, let's go. So the value of it is what you put into it and what you make of it. Y'all ain't buying my water anyway. I'm thirsty. Because it was late night and I was thirsty. What what? No, it's actually early in the morning. It's about seven, seven thirty-one. Alright. <laughs> um so yeah, enjoy your life far more without the uh, fiscal burden. And then the last two folks. Invest remotely in high yielding real estate markets. So check out the market. Hey, is this place even going to thrive in 10 years? Now, city of Philadelphia, uh, we're doing great. Uh, we were pointed out by National Geographic as one of the top cities to visit in 2020. Um, this was before all the mess that was going on. But ultimately still, hey, we I believe we got the most number of colleges in the area, if not definitely the most number of uh uh, graduate schools in the area, you know, all combined in one location. So uh, just be mindful in regards to where you're moving into, whether it be New York, LA, Philadelphia. Let me do that again. Some say Atlanta, some say New York. So make sure that you do find a high yielding real estate market because when it comes time for you to sell or in case of emergency where you need to move for whatever reason after the five to seven year mark you want to be like you know what i'm in a decent area where i can resell the home and make a decent amount of money off of it and not lose um as for reductions after inspection hey if you notice something like wow that hole in the wall i mean i knew it needed to be fixed but wow just wow that really, um, listen, can we talk about this real quick? You need to have that conversation. Please don't feel that, oh man, Dan, that water bottle looks great. I'll buy it for a dollar. And then you know, it's like, wait, did, did you spit in this? Did you, were you using this? Yeah, I told you it was my word. Oh, um, I don't think I wanna pay for the full dollar. Can I give you like 25 cents? I just noticed that. So, same thing for our home, folks. If you notice that uh, something's creaking, if you notice that there's faulty electrical wire, that's something that you're going to need to pay for in the long run, by all means, folks, make sure that uh, you include that uh, when it comes to negotiating that deal in order to purchase the home. <clears throat> all right. So, now to my next segment. Uh, so, we went over credit repair, real estate, uh, now for some career tips. Now, uh, because I am running short on time and I need to get to my job because that got me a jizab, a jizab. What was that from again? I forgot what it was from again. But um, got me self a jizab. No, but I, I actually just need to get to work. Um, 20 must read tips for launching a new career. I'm not going to go through all 20, but I will point out the major ones. And this comes from thinkful.com by Lauren Stewart. So let's scroll down here. Watch what you eat and how you move. So pay as much attention to your mental and physical health as you do your career search. We're talking about three square meals a day and plenty of exercise built into your routine. So folks, this is just conscious, just being conscious about it because some folks, I eat like myself. That's why I got this tummy. Do you guys eat it, tummy? That's why I got this bell way. Because with that bell way, um, I'm not eating what I'm supposed to do. So. <laughs> No, if you don't watch what you eat, it messes with your brain. You, you got to remember, folks, you're dealing with two brains here. You're dealing with the one up here, one down here. And try me on this. Go to Taco Bell. And uh, my cousins, uh, I'm just going to say that they're both my cousins. I just count on my cousins because I'm talking to them like my cousins. My cousins, one with Steven. Uh, we love fast food. We love going out, trying different places. And we love, 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 love Taco Bell. Try me on this, if you will. I need you guys to... Uh, pick a topic 
and write an essay. But why don't you eat some taco bell first? Enjoy yourself and enjoy some taco. When it comes time that you want to decide to write that essay or get some thoughts out there like, hmm, I wonder if I should, oh, oh, mm, I gotta go. And I ain't okay, I ain't okay, Annie. It's gonna mess with your brain. So focus, 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 focus. Make sure that you are being healthy when uh, it does come time for your job search that you are making sure that your uh, health comes first. Reach out for help. You should probably ask somebody. You should probably inquire with somebody. You should probably reach out to an individual that's willing to do like resume writing for you for free, uh, willing to assist you in the process, willing to show you what links that you need to do in order to start job searching, um, especially in tough times like these. And also check out to see if there's a YouTube channel that they may be going over free career tips and advice. But ultimately, the biggest thing is making sure that person will do the uh, resume for you for free. So I know a guy, I know a person uh, that's willing to do that for free. 267-702-3756. Uh, always ask questions. Don't know how to get a job from point A to B? Ask. Need to know how to edit your cover letter for your dream job? Ask. There are a lot of people who want to see you win and they want to see you doing it right. But if you are stuck, what do you need to do? You need to ask. Read, read, read. Self-help books are gold. Folks, in regards to... Now, here's the thing. Please don't... Uh, there's so many cheaper options out there. Like, free cheaper options. Very, very, very free cheaper options. So, if you're the type of individual that needs to actually have the book in hand like i gotta touch it i gotta go through it then i gotta make notes on it bada bing bada boom go through thriftbooks.com if you are looking for self-help books um if you uh you know prefer the audio version go to youtube.com nine times out of ten the same book that you're looking to pay 20 bucks on is on youtube available and if you're those that are like me uh that's a little bit more tech savvy and you don't mind reading from either your phone laptop computer what have you uh then by all means search the pdf version folks these are free if you just google self-help book ebook the same stuff that grant cardone was talking about in the 90s when he was getting started is the same thing that he's talking about now it's about taking action and being consistent and steps to doing so that's it, folks. Uh, practice, practice, practice. Have you started to get aggressive how you'll stand on an interview? Hold mock interviews to practice. I can't stress this enough, folks. Because of the fact that we have so many people that go to these interviews and <clears throat> say that they know they're going to say that one thing, but end up forgetting that one thing and completely go off trail. So be sure to do a mock interview, either with myself, either with somebody that you know, either somebody that you're familiar with, 267-702-3756. And then um, know your limits. You know, a, a lot of people will say like, oh no, just go out there. Man, you got the skills. You can pretty much learn this stuff on the job. No, 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 no. And I'm gonna keep it basic, plain and simple folks. If the job is requiring call center experience, if the job is saying that a person needs to have collections in their background, if a person, if the company says, we need these things before moving forward with you, then folks, what you need to do is understand like, do I have that? Do I have that? Do I have that? I don't think I have that. So for the folks that apply for the bilingual positions, if you don't speak Spanish, don't apply for the job. I speak Spanish. I, I, I feel that I speak some good Spanish, you know. Uh, muy perfecto. Más um, menos. But what I'm not going to do is apply for a job in regards to speaking Spanish. If you were talking to me in Spanish right now, I'm going to have to say to slow it down a bit so I can figure out what words you're saying. Uh, but I can pretty much pick it up here and there, you know, as far as uh, for our conversations. Especially, especially my favorite one because I do it to my son all the time. Siéntate! Siéntate! Sit down. So, <laughs> um, make sure that you know your limits and make sure that you know what uh, you can and cannot do when it does come to that job. All right. And um, one last tip on here before we uh, move forward. Get your resume edited ASAP. Hmm. Consider paying a professional. Consider paying somebody. Now, give me a call, 267-702-3756. That, that's pretty much basic, folks, because what I'm going to do now, if you don't have time to reach out to me or you're like, oh, man, I really got to get in touch with this guy, 
um, in regards to getting my resume fixed, hey, that's no problem at all. What you should be doing though is definitely Googling resume templates that you can copy off of to get the resume to where you need to be at. All right, so folks, credit repair, real estate tips, resume writing and career tips. And before I go into um, the news that just happened in the past 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen, it is June 10th, 2020. I will say June 9th was the marker in history uh, for this historical moment. But as it stands right now, Senate confirms General Charles Brown Jr. as first black service chief in unanimous vote. Now, for those that don't like Trump, I get it. I get it. But please know that in order to um, get in here, uh, that which caught that the president needs to actually select that individual. Now, don't get me wrong. He probably was convinced. He probably was persuaded. Or he probably was like, you need to get this is done. Or we're we going to have some trouble on our hands. So can you make sure that this happens? Now, for those that think um, that, well, pff, the Space Force, man, that's such a joke. Here's the thing that needs to be recollected over time and needs to be looked at over time. Um, first and foremost, <clears throat> let me point this out. Vice President Mike Pence took the unusual step of presiding over the vote, something he usually does to break ties. But Brown's confirmation, 98 to 0, was not close. Pence called the moment historic. So, I don't know about you folks, and I don't, here's what uh, individuals do, and I, I've just seen it with my fellow black brothers and sisters, is that we tear down the fact like, oh, well, they probably did it because of everything going on in the news, or they probably did it, and what's the Space Force anyway? It ain't like they go into the Navy or anything like that. Let's back all this up, folks. All this up, folks. For the moment in time, I want you to relish on the fact that history was made by the first chief of staff for a military division is black. I need you to understand how your kids are gonna look at this. I need you to understand how your nieces and nephews are gonna look at this. I need you to understand how their future generations are gonna be looking at this moving forward. So in my black, uh, in my Kings and Queens segment, uh, King Charles Brown Jr. AKA General Charles Brown Jr. being the first black service chief in a unanimous vote, move forward with that and count that as a win. Folks, please count every single thing that is going on in the news right now as a win from uh, Pennsylvania recognizing Juneteenth, uh, from those folks taking down uh, past, um, you know, slave owners as far as statues uh, in other countries. You know, there ain't no black people uh, in New Zealand. I'm kidding. There's black people in New Zealand. But <laughs> there's not a majority, not a majority, but for the fact that other countries are recognizing this and saying like, wait a second, make me. And the slave trader, um, and the statue of slave trader, I mean, take that down right now, throw that in the river. So please understand that people are going to be fighting with us, fighting for us, and fighting together with us. Even though you might not like them, like Mike Pence, who's always copying off of uh, Trump, but that's a different story. But understand, like I said, what the history has made for this in regards to moving forward and what's it doing for future generations. Because one thing that my son's grandchildren will be looking at when it comes to uh, Space Force. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to bring up the Netflix series in regards to it. So I was watching a little bit of it. I love Steve Carell. I love, love, love this guy for the fact that he started later on in his career with the 40-year-old version and just phew, skyrocketed. So I, I love him as an individual. I love the characters that are on the show, but I just could not get past the first episode. But one thing, one thing that was pointed out in that episode, which I dearly love, was that he looked at it as a joke being appointed the chief of staff, chief of staff for the Space Force. But he said, you know what? I'm making history with this. So, John Charles Brown Jr., you are making history with this. So we value and respect you uh, for this. And just to add on a little bit of motivation, uh, with your passion, folks, you're gonna have negativity. You're gonna have obstacles in your life. Instead of saying to yourself, God, why me? Or why am I going through this? Or why is this so challenging for me? You need to be asking yourself, hmm, how is this preparing me for my next journey? How am I gonna be taking this and making myself better? By me 
having this in front of my face, not being able to start the business right now, having to do more research, me losing out a deal, um, people not answering the phones. How is this getting me closer to my goals? When you start having that elevated thinking and start taking every single challenge and obstacle that gets thrown at you as a negative and instead of being like, ah, ah, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm so done with this business. I'm so done with this company. When you take a step back and be like, hmm, how can I overcome this? Or how is this making me stronger? You know what? All right. Instead of me making 100 calls, I need to be working on making 200 calls. I lost this deal. How can I get that deal back? Or what was the other deal that I need to work on? For those that are just looking to get it started up, man, I have no idea how to use Instagram, Google, YouTube. Folks, there are so much resources out here that you would not believe in order to get your business started, in order to get out there, get motivated, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to pursue. And trust me, the more that you grow that snowball and push it down the hill and tell folks what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. I myself, folks, if you haven't known already, I'm trying to create a million millionaires. Black on New Jersey is definitely helping me out with that. I got a lot of interviews. I've actually got one today. I believe I got two tomorrow. I got one on Friday. And last night, um, I had five more that I requested. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Daniel only got a few interviews here and there. That's practically nothing. Well, I still got about 200 people that I still need to reach out to the group uh, to uh, get them scheduled. So, folks, look for some exciting news. And even for yourself, and if you yourself would like to be on the show, you got a business, you got an idea, or you just want to discuss and chat, uh, feel free to reach out to me, 267-702-3756. Now, before I let you go, I had to wet my whistle. But ultimately, before I let you go, you know what I'm going to say. What am I going to say, folks? What am I going to say? Ladies and gentlemen, stay blessed and like, I messed up my own outro. How do you do that? How do you mess up your own outro? Stay blessed, my fellow millionaires. Have a great one. Enjoy. And it is going to be hot today, so make sure you got that air conditioning on. And uh, if you got any extra room in uh, your house, hit me up. I can just bring my laptop. I'll be in the corner. You ain't even got to worry about me. All right? Talk to y'all soon. Let's let on the beat.